Good morning, St. Joseph's School. It is Thursday morning, and I'm happy to be with all of you this morning uh, to celebrate this school mass. I really miss being able to uh, be there for the school masses, to have all of you at St. Joseph's Church. Uh, it's the coolest thing to have, you know, 100 plus students walking across the city uh, in procession behind the crucifix, behind candles, in procession to celebrate Mass together as a community. Uh, it's not only I that miss it, I think all of our parishioners miss it. Um, the city of Petersburg misses it. It's a testimony to of faith. And so um, I think uh, it's something we all miss. And I'm happy to be at least able to celebrate this Mass with all of you today. And I hope you all are able to, uh, to view it without any problems. Um, a couple of things uh, you may notice that I'm still wearing purple. I'm still wearing purple because it is still Lent. It is still Lent, and that means we still are in a season of penitence where we should be giving up something, where we should be uh, trying to be the best people we can be. That's all the time. But especially during Lent, we're doing something that maybe even hurts a little bit. Not because we want to hurt ourselves, but so that we can unite ourselves to Jesus on the cross. That's what Lent's all about, uniting ourselves to Jesus on the cross. And we, you know, maybe we, we don't eat as much. We give up something uh, that we really like um, or who knows what. But it's still Lent, and even though you're home, it's still time to, uh, to remember those Lenten promises that you made way back on Ash Wednesday, which seems like forever. One other thing I want to point out, it's still purple, still Lent, and Jesus Christ is still in this tabernacle. Jesus Christ is still here in the church, in the chapel. He's with us, body, blood, and soul, and divinity in the tabernacle. And so our church is open. I invite anybody who is well and able to visit Jesus in the tabernacle, in the church, whenever you can. Yes, Jesus is with us spiritually through our prayers. And yes, Jesus is with us when two or three are gathered in his name, but no more than ten, and always six feet apart. Uh, but still, he's there. But he's there in the truest way, in the highest way in the Eucharist. And although you can't be with me here today during this Mass physically, He is available in the tabernacle when you can. And so, since you can't be with me here physically today, right now, I invite you to spiritually unite yourself to Jesus during this Mass, to make what is called a spiritual communion. Unite your soul to Jesus Christ's passion, death, and resurrection memorialized right here on this altar. Unite yourself to Jesus on the cross at this Mass and make what is called a spiritual communion. When you're in union with Jesus at this Mass, you're also in union with all the other people, your classmates, your teachers, Miss Owens, Everybody who is in union with Jesus is also in union with each other. So make this Mass a time to unite yourselves spiritually to our Lord, who then unites us with each other. So let me take a moment to prepare myself in the sacristy. I'm going to get my chasuble on. Um, I'm, again, I'm seeing all of y'all's faces here and your voices, um, but this can still be a very special time. I also have one last thing I want to remind you. I say it before every Mass almost. Think of who, for whom you wish to offer this Mass. Maybe a person that's living, maybe all the people who are suffering from this coronavirus, or maybe other people, maybe your parents, or other people that are going through tough times. Um, but then also think of the people who have passed away for whom you wish to offer this Mass. Have these intentions in your heart, and when I say let us pray, and have that pause, that's when you can think of them. And then when I'm up at the altar and I have these really long pauses, that's when the first one is for the living, the second pause is for those who passed away. So remember to offer this Mass for somebody. And I'm going to be offering this Mass 
for all of you. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my greatest fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it, and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth. 
Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promise, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he, whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another? And do not seek the praise that comes from the only God. Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So once again, uh, on behalf of Father Brian, the pastor at St. Joseph's Church here in Petersburg, I just want to uh, wish that you all, hope that you all are doing well. We hope that uh, you're behaving yourselves, that you're uh, doing well in all of your studies, that you should be continuing on, uh, but also in how you're uh, 
behaving towards mom and dad, towards the little brothers and sisters, that y'all are being good. That's really important. Um, Father Brian and I both, we miss seeing all of you um, so much. And so it's, it's, a, it's a sadness that we have being separated. But it's kind of joyful that we are able to at least do this, to celebrate the Mass um, here and to, for you to join in online. In that first reading, you know, uh, the, these Israelites are so stiff-necked. I mean, Jesus, I mean, God calls them, you stiff-necked people. What does that mean? They're stubborn. So here's what, they, they got to have a face-to-face -face encounter with God. And then they, Moses went away up into the mountain to speak to God some more, and they got impatient. And they, they built a molten calf, a calf of molten gold. So they gathered all the gold, and they made a calf, like a little baby cow. And they started worshiping that as if that was God. You stiff-necked people. My goodness, we, we hear about them, like, my goodness, they were so dumb. What were they thinking? Why would they, you know, they had an encounter with God, and yet they went worshiping a false God. But you know, I think we all can do it too. We can all be kind of like those Israelites. You know, every day at St. Joseph's School, encountering the Word of God, praying every single day, being really good, and then coronavirus hits. Are we continuing our daily encounter with God? Are our prayers continuing? I don't know. Hopefully, yes. But maybe some other things have crept in that have kind of taken the place of God. You know, maybe video games. We're playing video games for hours and hours. And where's God? And we made the video games a false God. Just like that molten calf that the Israelites falsely worshipped. Are we making something more important than God? Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's uh, doing what I want to do in my room. And mom and dad, they can't bother me. Maybe we've made ourselves into a God. And I am more important. What I want to do during this time is more important than anything mom or dad have to tell me. Even though the fourth commandment says, honor your father. And we've made ourselves into a God. Or maybe there are other things. Maybe it's food. Maybe it's online stuff. Maybe it's who knows what. We all have a tendency to kind of drift away. Yet the Lord constantly calls us back. He's constantly calling us back into a prayerful relationship with Him. And so if we have created these kind of false gods in our life, now that coronavirus has made us stay at home, and we're not having the encounters with Miss Castle and Miss Robinson in religion class. And we're not praying, maybe like we were before, on a daily basis. Today is the day to start. Today is the day to re-encounter Jesus Christ on that cross, in the Eucharist, right here at this altar. And to rededicate yourselves to Jesus. And you know, in that gospel, he says... I don't test the, you know, I don't take the the testimony of humans. We take the testimony that that is Jesus Christ in that tabernacle and on this altar, not because I said so. We, we take the testimony of Jesus Christ Himself. What did He say? Take this, all of you and eat it. This is my body. He said that. We can find four different places, three in the Gospels and one in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, that tell us, Jesus said, this is my body, do this in memory of me. 
This is my blood. Do this in memory of me. Eat this. Drink this in memory of me. We take Jesus' testimony as true. His testimony is what's calling us back to him. And so if we have our false gods, our molten calves, today is the day to begin again true worship. Worship of the one who's been constantly calling us since before we were ever knitted in our mother's womb. He's loved us since the beginning of time. He's loved you since the beginning of time. And he's calling us to encounter him at this altar, even if it's over a screen and over pixels. Return to the Lord, love him, worship him, and he gives himself back to you. Body, blood, soul, and divinity, from that cross, he gives you his love. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. Blessed you, O God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you through the earth and work in hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed so you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, for the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Let's be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil, and always grant us your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy. 
through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you first if your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with her servant, Francis, our Pope, and Mary, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. For they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you've chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. 
until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father of faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice, the spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. In Christ our Lord, amen. To so all your servants, who are those sinners, open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share of fellowship with the holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetual, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you. Let us pray. First, the communion antiphon. Mm -hmm. I will place my law within them. I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people, says the Lord. Let us pray. May this sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ending. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Save Radix, Save Porta, Ex Quamundo Lux Estorta, Gare Virgo Gloriosa. Super omnes speciosa, vale o vale decora, et pro nobis Christum exora. Students, thank you for joining for Mass. Um, what a great joy it was. I think we had a little technical difficulty uh, right at the end of communion time, but uh, I 
hopefully you'll we're able to rejoin the, the live broadcast of the match. Um, and uh, I wanted to invite you to, to maybe think of any questions you might have. And if you have questions, just write them in the uh, comment box and uh, ask any question you want. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can to answer those questions. Um, and uh, just like we do when we have our class masses right here in this chapel, um, I'm happy to answer your questions uh, for anything you may, any question you may have. All right? And God bless you all. I'm praying for all of you.